Um, why do you have a space here and a space in San Francisco? I mean, surely all the action is here, isn't it? Yes, uh, the, the early stage action is, is, is there, uh, definitely, and it's essential for all entrepreneurs in the world to actually go to Shenzhen uh, and uh, work with you know, suppliers directly in order to build the best products uh, for them to get to market. Um, but um, after you know, investing and accelerating about 145 companies over the, the last few years, um, I realized that it was also very important to actually uh, sell those products. Uh, and it's actually maybe equally difficult uh, to sell a product than it is to actually build it. Um, and so uh, I recently moved to San Francisco uh, and uh, we've been building the next phase of the program here. The big appeal of Hacks is that it's within a short walk of some of the best and biggest electronics markets in the world. That means instant access to the cornucopia of components you'll need to source if you want your thing to become a thing. There, I said the word thing again, so that can only mean... The markets of Shenzhen are so vast that it would be foolhardy to venture in alone. I need me a guide. Okay, it's going. Mm. Okay, so we're here at the Singapore airport and we're heading on our way to Hong Kong. Go about there once a month. Everybody, meet Bunny. Bunny? Everybody. Andrew Huang, or Bunny for short, is an MIT alumnus, entrepreneur, and legendary hacker. That's hacker in the breaking and building stuff sense of the word. He's also written a few books, including Hacking the Xbox, and most recently, The Essential Guide to Electronics in Shenzhen. Yeah, he'll do, I suppose. Our core product are these here peel and stick um, electronic LEDs. And voila, you can see that um, the circuit lights up right away. There's no soldering required. And today, Bunny is making the pilgrimage to Shenzhen, like many entrepreneurs before him. And I'm tagging along to find out what it's all about. This is a mall where I come to do a lot of like searching around to see what's available, what's selling, what's not selling. There's these cables here, and there's these cables there. Like, how do they, how do they like price each other? And that's that's the whole idea of this market. It's so intensely competitive, and and the discounts are like easily 10 to 1 over what you can get uh, like online retail in the United States or. or in the, in and these the are the same things. These are the things that make their way. They're to... made here and then resold there. And I'm afraid to say it's not long before I succumb to the magic of the market. They're beautiful. And I'll have a pink one. Two, please. <laughs> the charging squid. <laughs> okay, so that's like £4.80. Yeah. The choice is bewildering. And so far, we've only walked a couple of hours. <laughs> so if you can't find it on this floor, don't worry. There's one or two more. <laughs> This guy's selling a variety of switches, display connectors, buttons, secondhand parts, batteries to phones, motors and couplings, bushings, all kinds of power adapters, USB connectors. This one's selling industrial controls. These are the battery holders inside toys, connectors that you would find inside mobile phones. Bits of wire, so you can, you can actually get these. So I could come here and ask her, uh, today I want a wire that's a little bit longer, and she'll actually go ahead and make up a thousand for me and have them ready by, by the next day. A lot of times when I come to Shenzhen, I don't even pack a set of tools. I had to come with 200 RMB and I buy everything I need because it's such a hassle to get to the airport security. And I'll just leave in the hotel when I leave because it's cheaper than checking it and paying for the check luggage. So you can see these guys sell soldering irons, diagonal cutters, oscilloscopes, thermal paste, and epoxies, development kits that engineers would buy, programming gear. Within like 10 meters of here, you can probably get everything you need to take some simple project and bring it into existence. How do you make sense of this? You could spend a week I've looking spent, around I've here. I've spent a decade here <laughs> looking around. Honestly, it's like, it's like I like it to like the movie Inception. By the time you walk from one end of the market to the other, the, the beginning of the market's already reinvented itself. If you do a deal, 
What do you do? Do you just shake on it? Do you yeah, have some shake. kind of... It's almost always a shake. It's, it's one of those crazy things where sometimes you'd be like, yeah, I need like um, 10,000 of these parts or whatever it is. And it's, a, it's not a small amount of money. And a lot of times a person would just come along and be like, yeah, okay, come back in uh, two days, right? And I could stiff them and not come them with money and they have the parts and all sorts of stuff. And oftentimes they don't ask for a deposit, they don't ask for anything, they just come back and they'll have them for you. I'd rather you than me if you do this regularly. <laughs> It's exciting. It's, yeah, like, it uh, it's like the shopping jungle. China's not all cables and chips, you know. It's starting to become known for its fully fledged devices, too. Until a couple of years ago, the name Huawei would probably have meant absolutely nothing to you in the West. But it's now the third biggest maker of smartphones in the world. It certainly sees itself as a global player. This huge company has over 170,000 employees, 60,000 of which work here on the Shenzhen campus. There's one thing I'll say about the Huawei campus. There's an awful lot of it.